Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Ray, back with another episode at my channel, Come As You Are, where we just talk about anything and everything um, as it relates to spiritual maturity, wherever you may be on your walk, whether you are a believer or a non-believer, um, this space is for you. So what I believe the Spirit wants me to talk about today is the power and the purpose of renewing your mind. The power and the purpose of renewing your mind. You know, that can be a very broad, general statement, um, especially amongst those in the church community and the Christian community. Um, as a believer, you know, we oftentimes may hear that term um, or that phrase, renewing your mind. Um, and what Paul talks about in Romans, is it 12, 2? Scripture, check that for me, somebody. But I know he talks about it in Romans where, it's, where he says, um, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And like, that's pretty much what God has been doing for me like since I met him <laughs> I was about to say since I met Bull but like seriously like I now don't get me wrong I knew God since I was like four or five years old but I mean when I say knew him I mean when I say know him I mean intentionally walking with him um in this life relationally like I'm intentional about my relationship with him and getting closer and more intimate with him and that has been going on around 2013 i say i got like a little wake-up call but like i committed committed to it 2015 so i always i generalize and i say 10 years <laughs> but then i thought about it the other day i was like should not be on 11 years by now um but if i'm talking um like actually being committed in a, in a form of discipline, I would say 2015, which is going on eight, going on nine years now. And that's really what like my whole relationship with him been about um, is, is renewing my mind. That's really how I got out of uh, dating women. Um, living a homosexual lifestyle for over 10 years. Um, that's really how I stopped smoking. That's really how I stopped my addiction to alcohol. That's really how I stopped uh, getting high. Like that's really how, that's really how I came to losing a lot of weight over a hundred and something pounds. Like that's really how I came to this level of this version of myself that I that you see today and I just wanted to talk a little bit more about what renewing your mind practically means which renewing your mind practically looks like can look like um and you know I just take it little by little um because it may or may not look different for other people but there are some key components that I believe may um is a key factor and i talked about it in traces in some of my other videos um but the spirit put that on my heart this morning so i want to talk to y'all about um practically what renewing your mind looks like um and how it shows up so where should we start holy spirit so for me, I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of history, a little bit of backdrop. As most of you know, like I said, I lived a homosexual lifestyle. I was almost 300 pounds. I smoked cigarettes for 11 years. I had, um, I drank alcohol almost every day. Um, I had like bottles in my room and that was normal for me. Like that was my norm. It wasn't, Oh, what's wrong? 
like that was my norm like sin was my norm but not only was sin my norm I was dealing with my stresses of life in abnormal ways so um I didn't really know how I didn't have the best coping skills I didn't have the best coping mechanisms and when the first um the first vice I'll say or the first sin I decided to walk out on was the big one of the biggies to me because it impacted my life the most was um this relationship that I was in and it was to the same sex um and not only that I had my thoughts I didn't think I was a man but the patterns of my mind of my thinking were very masculine so I remember I was living in an apartment on my own in the East Falls area of Philly and I remember you know just being so depressed around this time in, in the holiday season being so depressed because I had just finished my first semester of grad school and that was probably like 18 to 21 credits and it was just like over the top it was like I went from community college to this elite level schooling and I just felt all types of um, insecurities, all types of comparison, all types of what the heck did I do? Why the heck did I, am I here? And to make it through that semester, like really taught, gave me like the foundation of how to make it through the rest of it. But it, during that semester, I made a decision to leave my ex alone. I didn't consciously first make the decision to leave women alone. I made the decision to leave her alone. And I want to say that to say that that was a time period. That was a season where God had me reflecting a lot, had me um, thinking a lot about my life. And he needed some choices. He needed some decisions for me from me and that was one of the things that I remember coming to terms with like we're not going back to that uh relationship that took a lot of um brain power for me because I was used to my brain being on autopilot when it came to relationships um I didn't really want to have to think in regards to whether or not this person loved me or not. I kind of masked my reality with the delusion of the fantasy I painted in my head. And I knew that this relationship wasn't good for me. I knew that it was paining me to stay. I knew a lot of different things, but I had to come to the decision of, whoa, this really isn't benefiting me. And sad enough to say, but thankfully enough to say, after 10 years, it took me 10 years to come to that decision. But gratefully enough, I'm so glad I did make the decision. But to say it all starts with making the decision, right? So we have to come to a common place in our mind where we're like, we're not we're not going to go back or we're not going to continue to do the things that we know is harming us, even if it pains us to let it go. And that's really where I was in my life. I was just like, you know, I made a lot of easy decisions. Let me make some hard ones. So maturity, that that's really what that showed. But what God did was once I made up my mind, he started prompting me and probing me notice i'm not saying he made me or notice i'm not saying miraculously um things changed or like he started prompting me um pulling me it was more like unctioning me more like a like a visceral feeling of 
if he was speaking through my pain he was really speaking through my pain and now as i'm talking i'm just like god you wanted me to do this video for me um because i just prayed i just prayed who he was speaking to me through my pain and it was unctioning me to open up his word now my mom had bought me a bible a few years back really didn't have too much i i didn't know i knew the famous bible stories of noah um moses and but they they was like cartoon versions i didn't know like what the text actually said so i opened up my bible and i remember praying for peace like I remember asking God okay God show me how because I remember like my mom telling me like whenever you need something you you can always look to the Bible to give you an answer and I remember like that's why we have to train up the child in the way that they should go that way when they're older they won't depart because that stuck with me even though I was like in my mess that stuck with me and I remember saying, okay, God, I just need some kind of peace. And I remember him, either I had to Google it or what you can do, or I think I looked in the index or the um, appendix and it's saying that, oh, looking for peace. And it brought me to Philippians 4, I think 412. Scripture checked me on that. <laughs> that one also but i know it was philippians 4 and um it was paul was talking about at the time i didn't know it was paul but the author was talking about um think on these things things that are just that are lovely that are pure and i remember that just reading that scripture like literally like lightened whatever burden was weighing on my mind because i listen i was so accustomed to negative thinking i was so accustomed to entertaining negative thoughts that something as simple as think on thoughts that are pure think on thoughts that are lovely gave me a choice gave me the option to choose what I wanted to think. And I say that to say is because sometimes people don't know. Sometimes we as human beings, we can be so engulfed in our own pain. We can be in so engulfed in our own trauma. We can be so engulfed in just our environment, what has been placed on us, what we have endured, what we may have survived that we may not even know there is a choice or we may know there is a choice, but we may not know how to choose. We may not know how to choose or we may not know how to agree. Um, but those are like just having the option from reading my word. Now, notice I didn't say understanding. Now, yes, understanding, we do want to read for understanding. We want to read um, for God to give us understanding or revelation. But God will honor just also especially for those that are newer in the faith he will meet you meaning i'm a firm believer that he will honor what you don't understand he will fill in the blanks for what you don't understand and he will honor just to try he will honor just the just the positioning 
like you positioning yourself in a position and posturing your heart in a position to where I want to learn more. I want to know more about you. Because what that does is that activates God to meet you, to move. Faith, that's a that's a move, that's a move of faith. Like we don't know what we're doing, but we about to just try this anyway because we heard like Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So for me, God, use my pain to usher me into his presence, to usher me into a posture of curiosity about getting to know him. And he honored that among so many other things. And I just wanted to, you know, give that story to somebody who may have their, who has their own story. Um, but renewing the mind is, is not, I wanted to simplify it because it's not um, a complex thing. It's not a complex thing. We don't have to have full understanding of the Bible. We don't have to have full understanding of the context. Over time, we develop, we develop a taste, a thirst for maturity for a level that still calls us beyond the level that we're at. That's where I'm at right now, where it's like, all right, God, I seen you move here. I seen you move here. I seen you move there. Why am I still empty why do i still feel like i need something it's because god is still using my pain and this is why i'm just like god you were good and this video was not for nobody but me but i pray it blesses somebody who hears it he is still using my pain to mold me shape me transform me by the renewing of my mind but to push me and to elevate me to a level that I didn't even know was possible that I didn't even know I was missing. My God, you were just so good. You were, he is just that good, y'all. He is just that good. And, and, and that's why he knows what we need more than we need, than, than we know. That's why he can bless us beyond anything we can think or fathom for ourselves. And God is just so patient. He's just so patient. He will wait for you. But you have to get to the point. I've been telling this to some several people that I've been in contact with. You have to get to a point where you're tired of you. You have to get to a point where you're tired of the ish you living in. You're tired of eating the slop you've been eating. You're tired of the bed you've been laying in. You're tired of the ish you've been rolling around in and calling it sugar. Y'all know what I'm saying? Like, and it's at that point where we have to make a decision. We can choose to still to still do what we want to do, thinking our way is best, or or help me, Holy Spirit. We can choose to do something we never seen or thought we could do. We never thought or seen for ourselves, and that's scary. That's petrifyingly, terrifyingly, horrendously scary. Nobody says it's not. It's very, very uncomfortable. It may even feel like you dying. But I tell you, being in the fire, that's where God has me right now. Being in the fire, being in the wilderness, he is there with you. And if he is there, y'all, you're going to want him there with you. 
you're going to want to be there. If he there, you're going to want to be there. You, you're going to want to be there because I finally came to the point, to the, to the realization yesterday. It's like, God, you want me here. Like I'm steady trying to get out of this fiery furnace, but you want me on fire right now. You want me on fire. And if you want me on fire, check this. It's what I need because you're, you're that good. It's what's best for me because I'm getting what I need here. I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm just like, this, this is hurt. But I know you, your way is better than my way because I didn't try my way. Y'all, if you at a point, if you at a breaking point or if you at a point where you don't know what to do, you tired of you, that's really what I mean by you need to get fed up with you. Sometimes that looks like a breaking point. Sometimes that looked like a, like you had to come to the, to your, to the end of yourself. And sometimes that's where God really wants you. Most times that's where God really wants you because that's, he uses that pain to, to usher you to evoke what, what the changes that he needs you to make. I just challenge you to listen to this, that, that, that voice that tells you to make the choice of doing the moral good versus doing what you see the world do because that's exactly what happened to me several times it was like i don't know who it was i don't know if it was god or the enemy but some some something was like here you can you was in this toxic relationship for 10 years you got cheated on millions of times she don't even like girls you like it then the list goes on and you stuck with it because you're done. You, you need, you need to work on yourself. You need to heal. And just you, you can perpetuate that and not deal with that. Let, let that trauma, um, not heal properly. Let that wound still bleed and seep out or, Oh, and you can be a savage, a whole savage, or you could let that, you could let me correct that because, you know, you really do have a good heart and you always had a good heart and you always love to love and you don't want to see what your life is like if you become somebody, more of somebody that you're not. Get a moment with yourself. Have some real honest conversations with yourself. And I was going to say invest in a Bible, but y'all, technology is so good. Like you can you can Google, you can Google the word, the word and there's so many different versions of it. And you don't have to start with broadly with the whole Bible. You don't have to start with, I'm going to read it in a year. I know I got a video on that, but check that out if somebody is interested in that. But if you're just in a really, really beginning stage, which is, that's really good, especially if you're looking to mature, to have context for the whole Bible. But if you're just somebody starting out, we're not even sure if this is something that's for you. Use the U, the U version app. Beautiful. That's a beautiful, beautiful app. The Bible, the Bible Hub. That's a good one. Dot com, um, and GotQuestions. Dot com. Any questions that you? Those are peer reviewed uh, articles that people just ask general questions about the Christian faith, following G, following Christ, reading the Word. But why I like them is because. It's peer review, which means it's 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 in a collection of um how can I say this? Like the articles are not just written by one person. So the 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 validity, the verat like the validity and the reliability of what they're talking about is a lot stronger than if it was just written 
by one person that didn't go through um, rigorous uh, factors in order to make it like reliable, reliable source. But and just start with whatever your issue is, whatever your problem is, whatever is unctioning you, whatever is gut wrenching for you right now. And just start there. Google that. And ask God to give you where to start. What he wants you to think on. What he wants you to meditate on. So make the decision. Get a new thought. That's the second part. By opening, by getting a, by getting in your word. We're hearing what the Lord has to say about it. Okay. And then meditate on that. And then meditate on that. You don't need a church for that. You will like. It's really beneficial to be amongst the body of Christ. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying for people that may be apprehensive about being in community just yet, or maybe um, fearful, or may have gone through some hurt in a church community. Um, those are real things. Those are real things. And I'm only saying it from my own personal experience, y'all. All right. So those three things, I pray it blesses. It blessed me because the spirit, I was like, okay, why am I doing one on this when I could be doing something or something else? But he knows best because once I started talking, it blessed me. And I pray that something I said just falls on good soil in somebody's heart and takes root. That nobody can steal. That the enemy can't steal. Um, and nothing can contaminate. Alright. I love y'all. I pray y'all having a good and blessed day. Y'all. What day is it? It's almost Christmas. I pray y'all having a good and blessed holiday. If I don't see y'all before. I'm going to try to get one in before the new year. But I pray that y'all enjoying um, the holiday. This is the first season I'm not like season as seasonally depressed as I normally am. So God is good. <laughs> God is good. And he is working in me, y'all. He's may he continue to work in me. And I pray he is doing the same for y'all. All right. I play this video. Bless somebody. I love y'all. I will talk to y'all soon.